You're right, lads. Welcome to On The Bench LFC. In today's video, the topic is going to be about Sadio Mane and his call-up to his national team and what I think on it and my views. But firstly, I want to do the shout-out for my favourite comment from the last video. And that is Chris Goulding basically says... I can't see why James Milner shouldn't play in a game against Spurs because what he does bring to the team is experience and he always puts in a shift. So there you go, Chris Goulding or Chris Goulding. Sorry, mate, if I've said your name wrong, but that's my shout out for my favourite comment. Basically, the reason I picked that one is because it's true. That's what it is. I was talking in the last video about James Milner and whether I think he should start in a Spurs game. And what you said, Chris, mate, I totally agree with. He always puts in a shift. And that is why I do 100% agree with your comment. And I wanted to do a shout out for you in this one. So anyway, thank you for hitting the target on my last video, guys. Your support has been absolutely amazing so far on the channel. To all you subscribers, you're all absolute legends. And to any of you new subscribers, welcome to the channel. It means the world that you've decided to join us and I can't wait to get your views as well. So shall we talk about Saudi Amane? So obviously this story broke yesterday guys and a lot of you will already be aware of this and the fact is that the national team have called up Saudi Amane in the time frame that he's meant to be injured and not able to play for Liverpool. So there's big conflictions here at the moment and the media are kind of really latching onto it. A lot of people are saying that there's going to be a rift or there is a rift already. Jurgen Klopp's not happy. Liverpool are not happy. The national team don't kind of care about what Liverpool think on it. They think that he's all right to play, so they're just going to call him up and they're not going to listen. We had a similar situation when it comes to the Coutinho saga, but obviously the Coutinho one was related to Coutinho and his transfer to Barcelona. Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp had said that Coutinho had a back injury, so he wasn't able to play. And if you remember, I touched on this on the channel and said that we probably, it probably isn't a case of that. It probably is just trying to hide him from the Liverpool fans at the moment because of all what was surrounding him. But Klopp did come out in a press conference and said, we've got our own medical team that's saying he's not able to play. But if Brazil want to evaluate him and want to do their own medical assessment of him, then that's up to them. Coutinho flew out and then, as we know, he ended up featuring for them. But Klopp and Liverpool didn't stand in the way. So this is what I wanted to say in this video, guys. And that is that I don't think Liverpool can stand in the way. The power fully lies with the player on this one. The international team are within their own rights to have their own medical staff look at him. It's not like Liverpool are lying about it, which is the reason it's kind of making me laugh. Because it's like, what does his team, his national team think that Liverpool are doing? They're just, because they don't want him to feature for the national team, they're just going to go, yeah, we're not going to play him for six weeks because we don't want him to go and play for you. Just in case he actually does get an injury. Like, don't make me laugh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, of course that wouldn't happen. So, yeah, it's... I'm not too worried about it, guys, right? And I'm, I don't think there'd be a rift there between the club and that. Of course, Klopp and that will be a bit peed off if the national team try to push their luck and to put pressure on the player because, of course, that's the only thing that I think could be worrying about this is that is that Sa Mane's national team could basically turn around and go, no, we want you to play. We need you. Like, rah, 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 you know what I mean? Rush you back in. And if Mane is, like, still injured, but he's kind of towards coming back to be fit, then Mane might think, oh God, the national team really need me. So he rushes himself back in, plays, aggravates the injury more and it could give him another injury as well, which we really don't want to see as fans of Liverpool Football Club. We're already missing Mane. I don't think we're missing him as in the results and stuff. I don't think... It Having Mane not in the team is absolutely detrimental to how we're playing because that's why I believe we got Salah in. I've said about this before on the channel. We got him in for when we're without Mane and if we lose Mane. And obviously we have now for about six weeks, six to eight weeks. So Salah's now come in and he's playing absolutely fantastic. So it's not the be-all and end-all that Liverpool ain't got Mane at the moment. I think if we had lost Coutinho, then I would be saying a different thing at the moment. But having Coutinho and Salah on the pitch, that's two quality players, attacking-wise, that still add to our attack. But of course, Mane is like up there. I think he's probably our best player at the moment. When he's fit and firing, Mane is an absolute legend. And I am gutted that we're without him. But that's my concern, guys, is that... If Mane's rushed back into things, it could mean that he's out for an even longer spell. We've seen it before. I've said about this. Under Brendan Rodgers, Liverpool kind of lack squad depth. And because of the way, especially at 2014 season, we was pushing for the league. Players were kind of rushed back in when we was without them. And it just meant that the injuries got worse and it aggravated it. And I mean, look at Daniel Sturridge, for instance. 
he does he did suffer with injuries anyway, but I can't help but think that his injuries are now worse and he, he suffers more because he was rushed back into the team because we really needed him when he was out. And we've seen it with a lot of players in the past, guys. It's ruined their careers. And I think that under Jurgen Klopp, Jurgen doesn't like to rush people in. He'd rather play a youth player from the youth setup than rush a player back in and aggravate the injury. I think he's pretty clever with that one and we have seen a different stance on it. And all round, I think Liverpool are pretty more... We've got more squad depth, haven't we? Especially like in the last transfer window, getting Chamberlain in. Chamberlain is now... Klopp come out and said that Chamberlain's position is a winger. He's not a midfielder, which made me laugh because there was a lot of talk in there that Chamberlain only come to Liverpool because he wanted to play midfield. And... He was promised that from Klopp, which I don't think that was the case. I think he just wanted out of Arsenal. I think what Klopp probably did promise him and Liverpool did promise him is that we wouldn't really feature him as that right wing back or whatever. We see him as an attacking player, which Klopp said that his best position and the most consistent that we've seen from him so far is as that winger. And he's been training as a winger and he will remain being a winger at Liverpool until he's at least trained and learned the number eight role. So that's just kind of, I wanted to add that into this video. Chamberlain is a winger, so obviously he can feature now being with Mane out. So we're not like desperate for Mane to be rushed back. And for the national team to rush him, it's a little bit worrying that it could cause more problems to his injuries. But like I said, guys, the power really does rely with the player. It, it this If you look at it this way, if Mane turns around and says to his national team, I'm injured, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't play. Like, if you put me on the pitch, I'm not going to be able to run because I can't bloody run. You know what I mean? Like, it... That that does lay with the player. So it's interesting to see what happens and what Mane says and how Mane acts with this one because if he does feature for his national team, then it means to me, or it says to me anyway, that he's pretty confident that he's over his injury. But it would be good to see how professional Mane is as well. We know his quality is on the pitch, but I want to see whether he's got that world-class attitude as well, lads, where he can basically dictate to his national team and say, look, I'm injured, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to feature, you know, like I don't want to risk making my injury worse. So it is now a case of sitting and waiting to see what we see come out about it, see whether he does feature within the time frame that he's meant to be out injured for his national team. If that's the case, then it could be a positive for us. It could mean that he comes back for Liverpool sooner. I don't think it will be because, like I say, I don't think Liverpool are going to want to aggravate the injury anymore. I think it's a little bit silly if the national team try and do that because it doesn't benefit them, does it, guys? Because if he gets injured and it makes it worse, he doesn't feature for them any sooner either. Like, So, yeah, it's beyond me, guys. I really do want to get what your guys' views on it as well. Put in the comment section down below whether you think that we will see Mane within them six to eight weeks return to Liverpool. Whether you think that the national team are just being naive and are trying to push it on, or whether you think it's just them trying to, I don't know, throw their weight around and say, well... He's, he's our player as well, and we can do what we bloody want. If we want to assess him ourselves, we will. If we want him to play, he will bloody play. Or whether you agree with me that the power does purely lie with Mane, it does, lads. In my view, it does, you know. So, yeah, um, I think that's what we're going to see. I, I really do think that we've just got to wait and see what Mane says about it, you know. I mean, we're not going to see a public statement when Mane turns around and comes out and goes, I'm not fit enough to play along them lines but what we will see is if Mane does feature then we know that Mane's agreed to play because it does purely come down to that so yeah I don't know man but obviously we just got to wait and see on it guys but that's my views on it anyway um I want to quickly say as well for any of you guys that have obviously watched this video to the end I know that you're committed to my videos and my channel just on that basis alone but I am now on Patreon which I will put a link in the description down below and like I said, guys, it is, if you don't know about it, basically, you kind of do have to pay for some of the content that is on that, but it's a behind the scene looks. I've done my first video today and you see more of me, like I show you like everything, how I do my videos in the car, what my day consists of when I make my videos and a bit of inside the house and that. And yeah, you just see me on a more personal level. So I'm happy to be able to bring this content to you guys. It's not going to change anything, lads. Honest to God, my videos and my content will stay flowing like this on YouTube. So for all you guys that can't afford to pay the money or anything like that, 
don't worry about it, lads. I, you ain't got to do that. You're still going to get what you get from here. But if you do want to see a more of an in-depth look at me and my personal life and the behind the scenes of On The Bench LFC, then you can head over, click that link down below in the description, head over to Patreon and have a look at it for yourself, lads. See if it's something that interests you. If it does, then be sure to do it. It just will help help the channel out you know what i mean it's a way that if you want to support the channel financially as well a little bit it's not loads of money but if you do want to support then it is a way that you can do that for me guys so i just wanted to say that at the end of the video i didn't want to put it at the beginning of the video because it kind of it you know like i say for all you that have watched the video till the end i know that you are committed subscribers and that's why i wanted to say it there so yeah Check it out, guys. Even if it's not something you want to do, go over there. Check it out. I'm on I'm on different platforms, and I'm trying to grow the channel, and it's just another thing. So, yeah, if you do decide to... Uh, if you do decide to basically join me on Patreon, then thank you very much. It does mean a lot. Your support is amazing anyway on YouTube, and the fact that you guys like all my videos and comment and that, that means the world as it is. So it's not the be-all and end-all, but it, it would mean a lot if you join me on that one as well, guys. So check it out anyway. Like I say, link is in the description. Can we get 20 to 25 likes on this one? We're, we're just doing average, you know what I mean? But... Thank you for your support so far, guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I do daily videos and we stream loads, don't we, guys? So, yeah, thank you for joining. I'm out, guys. I hope you have a wicked rest of your, uh, rest of your days. Oh, rest of your days, lads. Take care.